What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Shout out to everybody watching this video right now. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you comment anything down in the comment section to enter your name into the $50 giveaway that I do every single week on this channel. Welcome back to the channel. We are here to cover the full slate for week 16 NFL. This will be the final look where we will go position by position and talk about every player that we're interested in. Uh, we're first going to start off with touching on weather because as we know, certain types of weathers can change the game plan for teams and make other make guys' projections rise or lower. So let's go ahead and start off with how the weathers look in the game in Tampa Bay between Houston and Tampa Bay. Um, is looking like they're going to have some rain. Um it doesn't look like it's going to be hard enough to really bother anything, though. There's a chance for rain. It's not for sure, but there's a chance for rain in the Tampa Bay game. Um, in the New England game, it's going to be incredibly cold, but I don't think it's going to bother either team. It doesn't really change the game plan. Um, there's a really good chance for rain in the San Francisco game uh, with the Rams-San Francisco, so the running game there will be good. Um, we already know Mozart's been running really, really well for San Francisco. Uh, we know what Gurley's capable of. San Francisco's a good run D, but we still... I mean, it's a bump to the run for sure. Now, where the biggest bump is going to be this week is Cincinnati at Miami. Okay, it's looking like it's going to rain fairly heavily all day in Miami. Okay, this is there. There is a very good chance of it. On top of that, there are winds of about 15 mile per hour in more. Okay, so with the rain and the wind being bad, it's a big bump to the run game. Okay. So we have Laird getting a big bump, and Joe Mixon I love this week. He's one of the guys that I really was uh, eyeballing. I've been eyeballing since the beginning of the week. He has been running very, very well. They really have been feeding him lately. And this matchup against Miami is a really a position where he could go nuts, okay? And with the way that the weather's looking, where it's going to be a ton of rain, where it's really the game plan's going to be leaning on the run, Joe Mixon is an amazing play this week, all right? And last but not least, we have that Arizona going to Seattle game. Um, it's not looking like that's going to be any issues, all right? Now, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Uh, let's start off with quarterback, all right? So my favorite quarterback, obviously, if you have the money, it's always going to be Lamar Jackson. Um, he's just, especially in cash games, he's just got the safest floor of any quarterback in the entire league because of the what he can do with his legs. Last time he played this Cleveland team, he dropped 26. Um, I believe if Baltimore wins this game, they clinch and lock home field advantage, which is something they'll definitely be fighting for. So I, I like Lamar Jackson. I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me on that, but I do believe they're fighting for home field advantage, I believe. Um, but anyways, Lamar Jackson, he is expensive at 8K. So only if you have the money. I don't think you absolutely have to. He is a great play, don't get me wrong, but we and we do have some value that has popped up that we'll get to in in at the running back position. But he's not an absolute must. In cash games, he's a very 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 good option, okay? Next up, a guy that I'm really interested in and I'm going to kind of bounce around here. I'm not going to go in any particular order, but Russell Wilson Going against Arizona. Arizona secondary. Patrick Peterson definitely gives them a leg up. But they have been bad. Arizona plays extremely fast, which means the teams that play against them have to play fast, which means more plays happen in general in the game. Wilson should be able to have his way here in this matchup at home in Seattle. I really like Wilson at 7K. Um, other guys that I'm interested in, uh, I really like Matt Ryan against this Jacksonville team. This Jacksonville defense is nowhere near the Legion of Boom like we're used to, that we remember. Oh, sorry, not the Legion. What was the name of the Jacksonville guys? What did they call themselves? Legion of Bo uh, Boom was Seattle. What was the Jacksonville? What did they call themselves? I can't remember. Comment down below in the comment section what they called themselves in Jacksonville when Ramsey and them were there. I can't forget I'm blanking on that. Anyways, um, Dak Prescott against Philly is in a good spot. His finger, he is having a finger issue. Um, it looks like he was able to turn in a limited practice. Um, it's Sorry, it's not a finger. It's a shoulder issue. Okay, so he's dealing with a sprained right shoulder. Going against Philly, though, this is a very good spot here in this one. And I believe they're both still fighting. So Dallas at Philly. Philly gives up a ton to quarterbacks and wide receivers. Expect 
uh, Dak Prescott to really go crazy here. Um, when it comes to guys that I'm really targeting, if you're spending up, just go Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson. Okay, if you're able to spend up, which I think you probably will be able to do, honestly, with the value at running back, I th- I don't think it's going to be too tough to be able to do that. So um, Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson, both of those guys are great plays. Just depends on if you need the money or not. If you don't need the money and you can get Lamar, go Lamar. If you need the thousand dollars, go Russell Wilson. Plain and simple. All right. Now let's talk about the guys that you want to go. If you're not spending up for those guys and you just and you want to spend down at your quarterback. There are multiple guys that you can go that seem like solid value this week. All right, first guy I want to talk about, um, I put him in the first look. Dwayne Haskins against New York is in a great spot here at 4-7. He finally had a, a solid game through 28 passes for 261 yards and two touchdowns against the Eagles. Like I just said, quarterbacks can do very well against the Eagles. Dak's in a great spot because of that. But Haskins is now going against a worse defense in the Giants. Their best corner that they did have, and that's not saying much, but Janoris Jenkins is now gone because he was talking shit on Twitter, okay? Janoris Jenkins is now gone. So that secondary is even worse. Expect for Dwayne Haskins to have a really good game. All right, another guy that I'm interested in is Will Greer. Will Greer is making his first start, and it's not... You know, super, super exciting because we really don't know what to expect. Um, They're probably just going to lean on McCaffrey a lot in this, I would expect. But with it being at the end and them not fighting for anything, I mean, I love the effort that McCaffrey's still putting in. I mean, if you ask me, I think McCaffrey's still going to be putting in 100% effort. Question is, is the coaching staff really going to have him out there too much and risk him getting injured right now at this point in the season? I would have expected them to limit him already, but they haven't. So with that said... I, I'm not thinking so. I think they're going to run McCaffrey as normal. Uh, that's going to give Will Greer some little dump offs. And at 4 3, he's pretty much free. He's got an okay matchup against the Colts. Um, it's in a dome. Um, so there are a lot of pluses for Will Greer if you want to spend down. All right. Um, I talked about my boy Matt Ryan. I really like him. Phillip Rivers is going against the Oakland secondary. We know how that is. That's always good. All right. Phillip Rivers. Going against Oakland, the dude throws a... Rivers has been throwing a ton of passes. He threw 39 pass attempts against the Vikings for 307 yards and a touchdown. He did throw three interceptions, though, so he's been struggling in that department. But Oakland should be a get-right spot for him. And him throwing... If he throws another 40 times against Oakland, he's going to smash at 5-7. All right? Um, Outside of that, there's nobody else I'm really interested in. You could consider Andy Dalton as an option against Miami. But like I said, there's a lot of rain there. Okay, so it's going to be a lot of Joe Mixon. So I would lean Joe Mixon over going Dalton. All right, so pretty much to sum it up at quarterback, if you spend down, it's Will Greer, Dwayne Haskins. Um, If you want to go kind of the mid-range, it's Matt Ryan or Phillip Rivers. And if you want to spend up, it's Russell Wilson or Lamar Jackson. All right? Now, let's talk about running backs because we have some great value. And like I said, I'm not going to go in any particular order. I'm going to start with probably the lock of the week. And that is DeAndre Washington. All right. DeAndre is expected to be the main man with John Gruden has ruled out Josh Jacobs. DeAndre Washington is a guy when he gets his opportunity, he shows up. This is a good matchup against the Chargers. He's only 4K. I expect him to be extremely chalky. I think even in GPPs, you go ahead and play him. If you want to get slick in GPPs and go Jalen Richard instead and hope Richard ends up being like the game script ends up being where the Chargers get up big and Richard ends up being a guy where they're really getting uh, involved in the pass game. I can understand that in GPP, but I had only a $500 difference. DeAndre is going to catch some passes too. So I'm really probably, I'm locking DeAndre Washington in every single uh, version. Cash, GPP, it doesn't matter. I'm locking him at 4,000. He is the lock of the week. It's pretty simple. And it allows us to be able to get a guy like Lamar Jackson and get get some safety there. All right. Um, Next up, another guy that I'm really looking at that I really like is Leonard Fournette at 7-2. He had a tough go against Oakland. Matter of fact, the last two weeks he's had tough goes. Now he's going against Atlanta. It's a bit of a get-right spot here in a dome. Um, it's a great spot, all right, at 7-2, going against them. Like like it's been all year, this dude is getting a ton. Like he's behind McCaffrey, obviously. But McCaffrey's getting a ridiculous workload. He's on the field for almost every single play the offense runs. But Leonard Fournette hasn't been too far behind. 
Okay, Jacksonville, the only worry is some of these teams are going to start limiting their stars a little bit. And the only thing is Jacksonville is not fighting for anything. So it's a little bit of a worry. Um, but honestly, I'm not trying to look too deep into things and overthink things too much unless they come out and say, look, we're going to limit Leonard Fournette in this game or make any assumption, to- uh, make any comment towards that. I'm, I'm going to believe that he's going to be full go and against Atlanta with the amount of work he's been getting. I like him a lot at 7-2. Um, I already talked about Rashard. Let's go ahead and go over him a little bit more. Um, he's a little bit interesting as a sneak as a sneak play for GPPs. All right, because this is a dude who gets targets in the pass game. If this game script falls behind against the Chargers, DeAndre Washington is, is solid for 500 more, but obviously you're going to have to get off the Washington's going to be extremely popular, okay? And cash games do not get cute. Play DeAndre Washington, all right? In GPPs, it makes sense to get off a, a very popular Washington for his counterpart, Jalen Richard, and hope that the game script favors Richard and he ends up like catching a touchdown and getting in the end zone, all right? Um, other guys that I feel like are good value this week, I already talked about him earlier earlier on in the first look. Philip Lindsay, man. Lindsay is a guy that I just love, okay? Because he's a good pass catching back. He's super, super quick. He's explosive. He can really turn a screen into a huge play at any moment. He's a big play guy, all right? Now he gets to go against Detroit, who is a bad run D. It's a great spot for Lindsay, honestly. At 5'3", I would not be surprised to see him go off. All right, another guy that I like this week is Melvin Gordon going against Oakland. Not only has Oakland's secondary been bad, but they're not too good against the run either. And if the game script happens to where Clippers, uh, Clippers, where the Chargers get up, it's going to be a ton of Melvin Gordon at 5'6". I really like him a lot. Um, other guys around that price range, I don't love that Peterson is down here at 5'. Th- I mean, he's not practicing, so obviously keep an eye on that. But if he plays at 5,000, um, he's okay value as well against the Giants. All right, I'm okay with him against the Giants. Um, other guys, oh yeah, let's talk about my boy, my main man. All right, this is definitely a guy, along with DeAndre Washington, keep an eye on him, obviously, okay? Um, because he was a limited t- participant Thursday. I think he's okay, though. I think he'll be fine, but keep an eye on it. Um, but Joe Mixon's one of my favorite guys this week because the way that this game is looking, with all of that rain, they are going to lean on the run, and Joe Mixon has been playing great as of late. I mean, the dude ran for 136 yards on 25 carries. Got three catches up against the Patriots last week. Okay? So, Mix is in a great spot against Miami. He could really go off, and I love him. Love him as an option against Miami this week with the way that the weather is going to be helping him as well in this game. All right? Um, other guys that you could consider Alvin Kamara against Tennessee is fine he just hasn't been doing much I'm not an Alvin Kamara type of guy lately I would rather Joe Mixon to be honest with you okay Um, anybody else that we should talk about oh yeah Le'Veon is going against his old team I talked about him in the first look lineup I think Le'Veon's just one of those type of guys that would have that like that narrative might work for he might go in pissed off and might really want to show up for this game Um, Willie we still have to wait and see on that because he hasn't had much luck behind that bad jet set, uh, line this year. So we'll have to see how it goes. But um, he's definitely an okay option. Honestly, with DeAndre Washington, I'm leaning Mixon, McCaffrey, and him in Washington. All right, McCaffrey has been an absolute monster. We talked about the possibility of them possibly limiting him. Honestly, I think he should be fine. I'm not trying to overanalyze this. This dude is a beast. He's probably going to get 30 against the Colts, especially with Greer behind center. Expect him to lean on the run super heavily. And when Greer does throw, expect Greer to lean on McCaffrey on short dump offs. Okay, so McCaffrey's going to have a big game once again. And I really don't care about his price in cash games because he's the safest running back in the entire league. And because we have DeAndre Washington, that opens up a lot of possibilities for guys like Lamar Jackson and McCaffrey who give us a very solid floor for our cash games all right anybody else Saquon Barkley had his coming out party last week we had him in our lineup when we dominated again but uh, he's got another great matchup against Washington he's another guy that I have some interest in interest in um his price did rise up to 8-3, rightfully so, because he crushed Miami. Um, this is a very good matchup at 8-3, so I can understand the uh, wanting to go Saquon. Uh, I already talked about Leonard Fournette. Uh, Devontae Freeman is a solid option as a value-ish play at 6000 
Let's talk a little bit about Kenyon Drake real quick because the dude went crazy. <laughs> Look at that. 42 DraftKings points against Cleveland. 22 rushes for 137 yards and four touchdowns. Okay, Arizona's really trying to see what they got with this young kid and expect them to run him heavy again versus Seattle. I think his ownership won't be too crazy even though he just went off last week. Um, he's a solid GPP option. But to sum it all up for running back, the guys I'm interested in, Washington, McCaffrey, um, Joe Mixon, pay attention to his health, Joe Mixon, um, Saquon Fournette, those are the guys that I'm really trying to focus on uh, the most. All right, those are the guys I really love the most. All right, let's talk about wide receiver. Now, at wide receiver, obviously the safest option in all of the land is Michael Thomas. This dude gets more targets than anybody else in the league. He's solid for like 25 or more every single week. Now he gets to go against Tennessee, which is a solid matchup. I mean, Thomas is a great play. The question is, is you're going to have to pick and choose who you spend up for this week. Okay, period. You're going to have to pick and choose. So it's all about finding out what position really has the best value and taking advantage of the value and then spending up where there isn't much value, okay? We do have some okay value at the wide receiver spot, and we will talk about them. But uh, running back really has the best value of the slate with DeAndre Washington. So it's something to consider. Maybe drop down from McCaffrey to one of those other guys like Fournette. Save that 3000 go Fournette. Um, something like that will really open up a uh, possibility to really go with a guy like Thomas who could dominate, all right? But anyways, um, in cash games, though, I lean running back over receiver all day. All right, anyways, let's talk wide receiver. Now, after Michael Thomas, obviously, you play him week in, week out. Another guy that I really like is Keenan Allen in this matchup, especially if you have Phillip Rivers. Allen is a guy who gets consistent targets every single week. He's going to get you 10 targets. He hasn't had the se- uh, a gigantic season this year. He's just kind of been consistent, solid. The last three weeks, he's been super, super consistent and solid. At 6'3", he's a guy I have a lot of interest in here against Oakland. Oakland's secondary is very, very bad. And especially if you have Phillip Rivers, Keenan Allen is a great play. And he's just a safe play in general. Okay, because obviously if you end up having the money for Lamar Jackson, you don't have to pair Lamar with anybody. You can just roll him by himself and then play any receivers you want. And you don't have to pair him with an Andrews or a Marquise Brown. You don't have to do that. All right. Um, Next up, let's talk about Julio Jones. All right. He was limited once again. Keep an eye on him. Um, We are at the end of the season where Atlanta is not fighting for anything. So I would not be shocked. If he sits, obviously, we're going to have some solid Atlanta value, so keep an eye on that. Um, Another guy that I like, Tyler Lockett. The only issue here is Peterson has been on a rampage lately. He looks fired up, and and he's definitely going to be on Lockett. So expect that to open up DK Metcalf a lot. All right, let's talk about him. I put him in the first look, and I still love him. All right, uh, with Peterson following around Tyler Lockett, that's going to open up Metcalf to have a big game. I'm honestly predicting Metcalf to have a very big game against Arizona. I really think he is. I'm not going to lie to you. I think he's going to get 20 or more, if I had to guess. All right, another guy right there around that price range, though, that is a solid option. Is Christian Kirk. He was limited as well on Thursday, but he's a guy, he, he gets okay targets. They should be behind against Seattle, and they should have to throw to keep up. Kirk could have a breakout game here, and like I said earlier, Seattle's defense is nothing like they were when they had their Legion of Boom, all right? Um, who else? Devontae Parker's been smashing, but he's 6'8". Um, some value option. We have Greg Ward. I had him in the lineup actually last week. He paid off big time, dropping a 19. He got nine targets. Uh, That's saying some. okay? Keep an eye on Nelson Aguilar and all that injury news because if they miss, he's obviously going to be great once again. Um, But yeah, he's going to be a great option as long as Aguilar is uh, out once again. Okay, this is going to be a competitive game, and Ward is a solid value option at 4-2. Obviously, I wish he was like 3-2 still, but it is what it is. Um, other guys that you can, uh, consider if you want to spend down there is Keelan Cole is another guy. He got six targets last week, 76 yards going against Atlanta. We all know the type of matchup that is. All right. And it's in Atlanta. So I could see Atlanta possibly getting up here in their game at home and Jacksonville having to throw. So Keelan Cole, DD Westbrook, those guys should be some solid options this week, as well as Chris Conley, by the way, he's four, three as well. He's good value. So these, these value guys are good. 
Um, I talked about Kirk, but if you talk about Kirk, you got to mention Fitz too. I mean, Fitz is has been fairly consistent this year. He hasn't had any big games, and he's definitely his age is definitely showing. Um, but like I said, they should be down against Seattle in Seattle and have to throw to keep up or throw to catch up. Should be some garbage time for Larry Fitzgerald. I really like Fitz at four two um, as a value option. Other options. We have Steven Sims, who got 11 targets. Sims is a very interesting value for me, especially if you decide you don't want to pay a bet quarterback and you want to go with Haskins. Pairing him with Sims makes total sense. And you don't have to pair him. But Sims at 4,000 is very, very interesting. 11 targets last week. He only caught five of them, but still. Like, come on, that's that's ridiculous. So Haskins, uh, Haskins obviously likes him. It's a very good matchup. Um, who else do I want to mention? Uh, I've already talked about Thomas, Keenan Allen, my main guys. Uh, I talked about loving Metcalf because Lockett's going to have Peterson following him around. I like Cortland Sutton. A.J. Brown, once again, should have a good game. Uh, that's about it. I've kind of talked about pretty much everybody that we need to talk about there. At tight end. The way to go at tight end is pretty much, look, the my favorite guy is Austin Hooper, especially if Julio Jones misses, okay? This is a good matchup here. I know he's coming back from injury still, but he was able to get back to six targets. I know he's coming back from injury, but look, they're dealing with Julio being banged up. Julio could be pulled out. That's going to raise Hooper big time at 4-4. I really, really like him. Another guy that you can go with for sure is Jack Doyle. Ebron is out for the year. Doyle's going to get some good targets. This is a good matchup against Carolina. Um, if you want to spend up and you have the money to spend up at tight end, obviously, Zach Ertz is the main man. This is going to be a competitive matchup. So I really love Ertz against Dallas. Um, anybody else? Jacecki at uh, for Miami against Cincinnati is a good option. Jonu Smith is a good option. Um... Hunter Henry against Oakland. Oakland's been bad against tight ends. They're kind of like Arizona. Not as bad as Arizona, but they're kind of bad. Jacob Hollister, speaking of Arizona, Jacob Hollister for Seattle. Going against Arizona is a solid option. If you have Wilson, it's okay to pair him. Um, Goddard, if you don't want to spend the Ertz money, go for Goddard and think that maybe he gets in the end zone. With Dallas probably focusing in on Ertz, expect Goddard to have a good game at 4-1. But yeah, point per dollar, the main guy that I'm interested in this week is probably Austin Hooper. All right, at tight end. Um, next up, at defense. Defense options are kind of scarce. Um, we do have some defenses against some young uh, quarterbacks that could definitely take advantage. The Denver Broncos are at home in Denver going against a young quarterback. Uh, we have the New Orleans Saints. Um, I understand that our boy has been having a, a good year so far, and he's really been rejuvenated. But at 2-7, they seem like a solid option with Tennessee, most likely having to keep catch up to New Orleans. Tennessee has been playing great, though. But at only 2-7, it seems a little cheap for the Saints D in this situation. Okay. Um, we know Tannehill has issues. And he's been playing great, yes, but we know who Tannehill is, and he could str- he could throw some interceptions and make some mistakes trying to ke- keep up with the Saints. Outside of that, we have the Atlanta Falcons are an option. <clears throat> uh, Philly is beat up right now, so the Cowboys could be okay, but it's in Philly, so I'd rather not. Um, honestly, the Denver Broncos at 3-5 is probably the way to go. If you want to spend down, I'd probably say the Saints. Outside of that, I'm definitely not playing the Browns against Baltimore. I love Baltimore against them this week. Um, yeah, that's about it, honestly. Um, the Colts at 3-3 are interesting, but I really like McCaffrey. I think he has a solid game. But that rookie quarterback could make some mistakes, especially if the Colts are able to get up at home and Carolina's having the throw to keep up, catch up. He could make some mistakes and throw some picks, so I understand it. So Broncos, spend down for Saints or the Colts, solid ways to go. Even the Jets against the Steelers. There's, you know, I don't really care much about defense. I'll just, if I need the money, I'll change my defense. If I don't, I'll just go with my favorite defense. And that's probably the Broncos this week. All right. 
And that's it. Thank you guys for joining me as always. Hopefully I was able to touch on every player that you have considered this week. Uh, Let's get this money, man. We got that good value at running back. We're able to get the guys we really want. Let's go out and crush it once again. Greenlightdfs.com. Join the squad for week 16. Let's get it.